Hello children, let me welcome you to the virtual class of the Brihan Mumbai Mahanagar Palika. My name is Shraddha teacher. Children, we are in the middle of this COVID-19 pandemic and because of that we are not able to go to school but that doesn't mean we are going to stop learning. So we are going to do many lessons which are very interesting from your textbook through the virtual class here. So let us do a lesson in English today. So children, come on, let us without wasting time go to our lesson for today. So the subject will be English for standard 9th and the lesson is lesson number 2.1 in your textbook and that is Invictus. So we are going to start the new unit that is unit number 2 in your textbook with this particular poem and this poem is about human feelings, it is about how uh, strong we are as human beings and how we can overcome any situation that comes our way. And as a part of this lesson, we will uh, read the poem, we will try and do certain activities which are before the poem, that is the uh, pre-learning activities in the poem, then we will look at a few things from the English workshop, alright. So this is going to be a very interesting lesson and uh, please wherever you feel that you have a doubt, what you can do is, you can always pause the video and replay the video again. And one more instruction which I want to give you children as far as these live lessons are concerned. Always when you see which lesson you are going to do, you pause the video and you go and pick up your textbook and keep the textbook open. So that when I am reading the lesson or I am reading the poem from here, you can also follow it in your textbook. So you will be able to understand and relate better. Come on, so let's go to our poem for today. So like I told you, the name of the poem is Invictus. And what does the word Invictus mean? It means something which is unconquered. Okay, something which has not been conquered yet, which is independent, which is free. Alright, and in this particular case, it is the spirit of the poet, which is the symbol for Invictus. It is a spirit or it is the, you can say, character of the poet, which has been yet unconquered. So who has written this poem? This poem is written by this very famous English writer called William Ernest Henley. So here on the screen you can see a, a picture or an image of the great poet William Ernest Henley. Let's try and understand a little bit about him now. So he was an influential English poet. He was a critic and he was also an editor of the late Victorian era in England. So now what is this Victorian era children as you grow up and you learn more about this language you will know that whatever literature is there in English it is divided into different periods. So you have the Elizabethan era, you have the Victorian era, you have the modern era. Okay. So our poet for today William Ernest Henley he belonged to the later part of the Victorian era. So this is a little bit of information about the person who's written this poem for today. Let us go and see what the poem symbolizes. So here the poet wants to tell us that I am the master of my fate. That is he does not believe in luck or he does not believe in destiny. He believes that he is the person who will control his fate. Your fate means your destiny. Or what is supposed to happen in your life all right and he also says that I am the captain of my soul that is I am the person who will decide what will happen in my life and I will not bow down and I will not allow the circumstances to conquer me so this is what William E. N. Lee wants to tell us in this particular poem this is the message that he wants to give through this particular in the textbook also you will see the same thing below the poem. So here also he is saying, I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. And see it is in the form of an anchor of a ship. Alright. So this is the main children theme of the poem. So it is about uh, feelings. It is about how you want to conquer your life. It is about symbolism over here okay so related to this idea of symbolism there is a particular 
uh, you can say exercise in your book which we will try and do now. So if you read the part in the preparatory part of the lesson that is before the poem you have certain exercises which are part of your lesson. In that you will see this particular match the pair activity where you are supposed to say which thing symbolizes what. So you have six words on the right side and six words on the other side. So let's see what the words are. So we have a tall mountain, we have a dark night, a rose, sunrise, a flying bird and thunder. And on the other side you have beauty, you have freedom, you have deep distress. That is when you are very sad, when you are very disturbed, disturbed mentally. Then you have anger, you have strength or firmness and hope. So now children, a tall mountain doesn't exactly mean a tall mountain physically, okay? It symbolizes something else. When you say a tall mountain, in poetry you will find these kind of things that the word which a poet uses does not mean the literal meaning of the word. Alright, so here in the poem, if these words come up, what will they mean? In our particular poem, we do not have these words, okay? But then, this is how you will learn what symbols mean. What is the meaning of symbolism? So, a tall mountain here symbolizes strength and firmness, okay? Now, we all know that a mountain cannot move. You cannot move a mountain and that is why it is supposed to be a symbol of strength and firmness. It is where it is. Okay. Whatever you do, you cannot move a mountain. Of course, you can break it down. Now with modern technology, people are uh, using bombs and people are using big, big machines to break down mountains. That is a different thing. But you cannot move a mountain. So that is why a tall mountain, it symbolizes strength and it symbolizes firmness. What about the next one? A dark night. So it symbolizes something which is like very sad or deep distress. When you are deeply distressed means you are highly disturbed mentally. You are feeling very very sad. Okay. Next is a rose. Now, the, way, the moment we say a rose there is an image of a very beautiful fragrant flower which comes to your mind. So a rose here symbolizes beauty. Alright, so rose, whenever you say, whenever a poet uses a word, a rose in a poem, it could mean that he wants to talk about the beauty of something. And then you have sunrise. So sunrise symbolizes a new day. A new day symbolizes new hopes all right and then you have a flying bird now see the stress is on the flying bird so a bird when it is in a cage that is not a symbol of freedom that is a symbol of slavery okay when a bird is in a cage it is a symbol of bondage but here when you say a flying bird it is a symbol of freedom and lastly we have thunder uh, you know when uh, uh, there is uh, when it rains very heavily you have lightning and then you have thunder and when it thunders when you hear the sound of the thunder you feel that something very uh, frightening is happening around you and someone is very angry all right so thunder symbolizes anger so this is a small exercise from your textbook which aims to make you understand what words symbolize what? Now the list is endless children. As and when you go on reading. The more you read, the more you will come to know about these things. Okay? So this was about one exercise. Now let us come to our main poem for today. And let us read the poem. And at the same time we will try and see the meaning of some new words as well. So here you have, out of the night that covers me. Black as the pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. So he's saying, out of the night that covers me. Now here night doesn't actually mean the night. But it means a sad depressing situation which has covered him 
and it is black as the pit from pole to pole. Pit black means a totally black. Okay, there is not a ray of light there. So there is this particular situation where the poet is very distressed and everything around him is pit black but even at that particular time also he is thanking gods whatever gods he say for my unconquerable so here unconquerable means fearless now if you check in the dictionary unconquerable has got many other meanings indomitable but i don't want to give you a difficult word as a meaning for a difficult word so here unconquerable means fearless something his soul is unconquerable it is so fearless that you can never control his soul controlling someone's soul means controlling that particular person okay in the fell clutch of circumstance clutch of circumstance here means what we will talk about it when we finish this four lines i have not winced nor cried aloud under the bludgeonings of chance my head is bloody but unbound okay that means the clutch of circumstances clutch means when someone catches hold of you and doesn't let you go okay and you're struggling to free yourself that is the meaning of a clutch now he is in the clutch of circumstance now here clutch of circumstance could mean the negative occurrences which are happening in his life i have not winced or cried aloud now, wincing or crying aloud means uh, you can say reacting okay when someone is wincing means that person is in pain and when someone is crying aloud that means that person wants to express his sorrow or he wants to express his anger under the bludgeonings now what is the meaning of bludgeonings bludgeoning here means beatings or when someone hits you very badly that is the meaning of bludgeonings of chance chance here means fate that is his luck it is hitting him badly and his head is bloody bloody means he is bleeding all over okay he is so injured because of the beatings of fate or because of the beatings of uh, you can say luck his body is injured but his soul is still unbowed unbowed here means his head is still held high his head is bleeding very badly he is very injured but he is not he has not let his head bow down okay so this is in short about the second uh, stanza you can say of the poem what we will do is after we read the entire poem and see the difficult words we will try and understand the meaning or the crux of each stanza here let's move on and come to the next part now beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shade and yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid so he is saying wrath wrath means anger okay now the situation is so bad and he feels that everywhere around him the situation is very negative it is full of anger it is full of tears and even the near future okay it is not that today is bad but even the near future does not look very encouraging to him so looms means appears whatever is there in hold for him in the future that also appears to be a little horrible horrible means something which is not very pleasant yet the menace menace some means something which is unpleasant something which bothers you okay or something which is a cause of danger to you now danger is the word which we can associate with this meaning of menace here in this particular situation now if you watch cartoon films you must be knowing there is a particular uh, cartoon uh, character called dennis the menace so here they menace me they dennis is very very naughty and he is a cause of concern and he is a cause of you can say he is a nuisance for his people around him that is why in that particular situation we say dennis the menace here it means the dangers which are part of your finds and shall find me unafraid means whatever dangers are there in my life i will not bother and 
and I will still be unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishment the scrolls. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. So, whatever is in store for me, okay, whatever negative things are going to happen in my life, but I am the master of my fate and I am the captain of my soul. So, these two lines are, you can say, they are the lines which symbolize the poem. This is what the poet wants to tell you when he has written this particular piece of poetry. That he is the master of his fate and he is the captain of his soul. So whatever happens, he is never going to bow down. Okay? Now like I told you, we will look at the meaning of each stanza here. So this is the first one. Out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul means during the difficult times of his life the poet feels thankful to God because he is fearless he doesn't have any kind of fear and he attributes and he gives that thanks to his to whatever God he believes in then you have in the fell clutch of circumstance I have not winced nor cried aloud under the bludgeonings of chance my head is bloody but unbowed okay so despite all the negative uh, things which are happening around him he perseveres perseveres means he continues to keep on doing his own thing he continues to try to conquer the circumstances the next uh, you can say stanza symbolizes beyond this place of wrath and tears Looms but the horror of the shade, and yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. Here it means apart from the current problems that the poet has. He has got a lot of problems on his plate at the moment. Okay? But he knows that there are more difficult things coming his way. But he does not care or worry. So he knows that his life is difficult at the moment, and in future also it's going to be difficult. But he does not have too much worry about that because he has a lot of confidence on himself that he will be able to face it. Then in the last stanza, it matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. He is not concerned about his future because he knows that only the present is in his control and he is doing his best to make his present so this children were the four stanzas of the poem and also the explanation of these stanzas in short. Alright, so by what you can do is in case you want to write down something, you can pause the video at that particular moment and you can take down the points. When it, whether it comes, whether it is about the meanings or whether it is about the uh, your summary of that particular stanza. So children, this was about the poem. It symbolizes human feelings. Okay. Now, one more thing which you can talk about is what is the mood of the poem? What is the tone of the poem? What does the poet wants to talk about? The poem? So when you say invictus, the tone is defiant. Defiant here means what? Defiant means someone who is rebellious. Okay? Rebellious means someone who always wants to, you can say someone who doesn't want to ever bow down to someone else. Rebellious. Sometimes you also have this feeling of rebellion in yourself. When your brother, elder brother or elder sister tells you to do something, you sometimes become rebellious and you say, no, I will not do it. Do whatever you want to do. I will not do it. Okay, so that is rebellious. The mood of the poem is a little dark. Alright? And what does the speaker do? He views life as an opponent. So he doesn't take life as a friend, but he takes life as an opponent someone who is working against him and when the poet uh, when the poet writes this particular poem and when you are reading it you get a feeling that he is talking about some battle or some war zone or some place where there is a lot of struggle so this is generally about this poem alright so that was about the poem as such uh, we will go and do certain more exercises from the poem so there is a particular exercise this poem about rhyme scheme. 
Okay, we will go to the exercise later. First, let us try and understand what is the meaning of rhyme scheme. So, a rhyme scheme is the pattern in which the last words in the lines of the poetry rhyme. Now, what is the meaning of a rhyme here? Rhyme means a word that has the same sound as another word. The end sounds, when they sound the same, you can say it is rhyme. Okay? Now, we have learned about rhyme scheme. We have learned about rhymes previously also. But before we go to the actual rhyme scheme of the poem, let me just brush up your knowledge. So when we record rhyming lines with letters that we all know, we use the letters of the alphabet A, B, C, D in sequence. The first two lines that rhyme would be A, the next two would be B and so on. So one set of rhyming words will be represented by one letter of the alphabet. And now the rhyming lines do not have to come right, one right after the another. So it is not necessary that line number 1 should rhyme with line number 2 or line number 2 should rhyme with line number 3. That is not necessary. Okay. So this is the meaning of rhyme scheme and like I told you earlier we have done this before also. So we are just doing a revision. Let us look at some examples here now. So good rhymes with good. So the d sound. Good. Good. So the d sound is the same. So that is why we call them rhyming. Taught rhymes with bought. So you see the t sound of the letter T. Then you have raw and law. So the aw sound here. Okay. So show the o sound here. So show. Den den. So the n sound here. Den then van than so you have the again the n sound but it was in and here it is an then you have best and rest so the t sound all right so these words when they come at the end of a line in a poem you can say that they are rhyming with each other let us look at an example here so see, I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high over vales and hills when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. Now, whatever yellow boxes that you can see here, you will see cloud rhymes with crowd hills rhymes with daffodils trees rhymes with breeze one more thing which i want to point out to you children here see trees has a s letter at the end and breeze has a e letter at the end but even then they are rhyming because they sound the same when you say the words okay so this is what the meaning of rhyming words are and this is how rhymes are used and we also saw how a rhyme scheme is written. Now let's go and see the rhyme scheme of the poem Invictus. So see here out of the night that covers me. Okay here the me rhymes with the B and the pole rhymes with the soul. So you have me which is called A and B which is named A again. Pole and soul are B here. So when you read it will go like this. Out of the night that covers me. Black as a pit from pole to pole. I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. Likewise you have circumstance which rhymes with chance. You have allowed, which rhymes with unbowed. You have tears, which rhymes with years. Shade, which rhymes with unafraid. Gate, which rhymes with fate. And scroll, which rhymes with soul. 
okay now look at the letters see me and b are a and a look at the arrow moving on your screen children so me and b are a and a pole and soul are b and b circumstance and chance are c and c allowed bowed are b and d tears years is e e shade unafraid is ff gate fate is gg scroll soul is hh okay now sometimes when your pronunciation differs from what it is supposed to be you might find that it is not rhyming but then remember when they have said that it is rhyming you should try to match your pronunciation with the other word so that was about the rhyme scheme children now we have a small one more exercise in your book where they have asked you to read this particular poem where in where lies the land by ac club so let's read the poem and let's try to understand what it means so where lies the land to which the ship would go far far ahead is all her seamen know and where the land she travels from away far far behind is all that they can say so these particular lines they symbolize uncertainty on sunny noons upon decks smooth face linked arm in arm how pleasant here to pace or o'er the stern reclining watch below the foaming wake far widening as we go these four lines indicate pleasant times in your life on stormy nights when wild north westers rave how proud a thing to fight with wind and wave a dripping sailor on the reeling mast exults to bear and scorns to wish it past so this is bad times which come in your life and again the first four lines are repeated in the end now we are not supposed to understand the poem because it will be again we will be getting into a new lesson then they were asked us to just read the lesson by by particular this poem only this poem is also about the experiences which we go through in our life so children now you have watched the video so after you watch the video now you will have to complete a few simple tasks now you might have watched the video on your computers or your laptops or your mobile phones now after you watch the video what will you do you will please go to the description box which is given below the video so what is the description box see the description box looks like this all right and after you go to the description box you will see that there are a few questions there now what are these questions about these questions are about the lesson that we just learned or the video that you just watched so what will you do you will think back properly about the lesson and you will try and answer these questions and note down the answers in your notebook if you want okay after that we have another task waiting you will also click on the link which you will find in the description box to fill up the google form so now what is the google form children it is nothing but a simple form there are a few simple questions there about the video which you just saw and also about yourself so these are the tasks now that you will have to complete after you watch each video so children wasn't that a very interesting lesson i'm sure you learned a lot of new things in this lesson if you have liked this video please hit the like button and also subscribe to my video so that you will get to see all the videos which i keep posting regularly